Hey, how's it going everyone? Welcome to another update to Epic 7. So today the dev notes actually came out. So we're going to take a look and see what they got to offer. They're talking about uh, regular balance hero changes as well as some future changes coming to the ML nerfs and buffs that they've been talking about for a while now. So let's go ahead and get into it. So first off the bat, we uh, see that it says today we would like to inform you about future changes, the hero balance, the uh, which is scheduled for August the 8th. Additionally, we will inform you the changes to the summer system, uh, certain moonlight hero changes, memory imprint improvements, and skill renewals by the end of July. So we're definitely going to be getting some cool stuff. Um, we are focusing on two areas when it comes to balancing heroes. First, we are searching for a solution for the meta freeze due to some overpowered moonlight heroes. We are delivery going through the internal steps to increase the diversity of heroes in the meta and we are trying to make it as fast as possible. Also, a thorough verification process will be added to prevent the situation from occurring again. Nice, so this is good. So they are trying to fix the issue and they are trying to make a uh, verification process to make sure that we don't have this like stale meta once again. So maybe like a constant future updates or something like that that they are trying to implement. Secondary. Underperforming heroes will be regularly rebalanced before the balance patch we had in June. We promise to have regular hero rebalances every six to eight weeks. We hope that this upcoming balance will give you a better experience in growing heroes and create your own strategies and tactics. So they want to balance the regular heroes, not just the ML heroes, um, every basically like, well like two months right there. So you know, if we're having like something in the meta then every two months we can expect probably a shift if one of these like regular heroes become pretty strong so you may see like a fluctuation within the meta and stuff depending on what they do with the hero so that's very nice that they're trying to give like some breath of fresh air to the meta with something like that um but right off the bat we're starting off with the first changes and it is lulica so she's actually getting changed i know a lot of people were saying she was underwhelming let's see what they got to say um wild wave before was attack with intense elemental force damage dealt increased proportional to the amount of uh, yeah, the amount of enemies lost health attack of uh, after is attack with intense elemental force with a 50% chance to decrease defense for two turns damage dealt increases proportional to the amount of enemies lost health so it's keeping that but it gives you a 50% chance to decrease defense for two turns now that's kind of crazy because she already has a skill that decreased defense and it's the uh, 75 as we can see here is going up to 85 percent chance and is going to have a different type of scaling for the uh, wave of vengeance before so the wave of vengeance before used to be 75 now it's going to 85 percent chance and it used to be damage dealt increase every time using the skill now it's going to be caster's attack increase every time using the skill so basically what they're trying to do is make the not scale off the damage dealt, but it scales off your attack. So your attack is going to increase now. Um, so overall, increasing her damage being um, done, which is really good because um, it increases her attack every time the skill is being used and gets staggered three times. So she's increasing her overall uh, attack percents. We don't know the numbers for how much is actually increasing her stats by, but if it's anything, um, you know, drastically changing, then that could be very good, especially if you stack this. On top of another um, attack increasing uh, like artifact um, that doesn't like you know have like the same effect being applied can't be used something like that if we could find one that works with that that actually be very good um yeah, it says um the skilled wage revenge now increased attack instead of damage dealt this in turn impacts damage to the skill wild wave and the barrier granted by Reiko's blessing not only does the skill wave of vengeance get stronger, but Lula could get stronger as well. In addition, a decrease in damage has been added for the skill wild wave. Um, we have changed the design so that it works in a defense. Okay, so they decrease the damage. Okay, so increase the damage for I guess some more utility for it. Okay, I mean that's fair, um, especially if this skill is going to be doing more damage now too. Um, Ballin says. Not much here, um, but he's definitely getting a cooldown reduction. You can see that's a two-turn cooldown reduction. That's actually kind of crazy. Um, so you get more chances to inflict those debuffs. And yeah, and then overall more damage. Damage increased by 30% and damage dealt proportional to debuffs increased by 
50%. So more chance to get those debuffs and more chance to get this damage increase. That's actually kind of insane. So he's going to be doing some nice damage. Um, Ballin says the major inflicts very debuffs. Yeah, the damage of Dark Cloud, which reset the account of Last Requiem, was not strong enough. So they basically made it stronger, of course. Um, so yeah, he's definitely looking pretty good. Um, Ludwig here, actually, it seems like they're actually kind of nerfing him a bit. So right here it says when the enemy is defeated by his attack, the caster is granted invincibility for one turn. Um, right here it says granting invincibility to the caster for one turn. Um, so that's actually a buff um, because when you use the skill, um, you just get the invincibility rather than the attack being um, having a kill. But here it says the defense by 50% penetration. Now it's actually going down to defense penetration by 20%. So rather than 50% uh, penetration, he's actually getting 20%. So they're lowering his cleave, but he has the more invincibility. I don't know if this actually is a buff to Ludwig. Um, it sounds more like a nerf to me, but I actually don't know exactly what they were going for. Uh, it says, Call of the Moon would now always penetrate by 20 for defense and an additional 30 percent if Lugwe is granted invincibility okay so if he gets the invincibility then he'll get it which will make the damage more effective and balanced regardless of whether or not Lugwe is granted invincibility because before it was penetration by 50 uh, percent if the caster is invincible um so basically they lower the amount he can get but it's still technically the 50 percent but now he get the he actually get the invincibility for free rather than having to kill a unit to get the invincibility. Um, so I guess it balances it out in that sense. But it's still just a like just a weird balancing of how they wanted to go about it. But I guess it makes sense technically. Um, and Tenebrae is actually getting some percent chances increases. So um, 35% to 50% chance to put them to sleep for one turn on Dark Explosion, and 85% chance of increasing by 10% there. Um, for a chance to decrease defense for two turns as well as a cooldown reduction of that nightmare for uh, one turn so instead of being five turns it's now four turns um, this says the probability of Tenebrae debuff landing is less than competitive than other heroes so they wanted to make that a little bit stronger yeah a 35% chance is actually not that strong um, you know 50% chance sounds a little bit better especially if she's going to have some effect chance increases inside there. You could probably get that up to around like 75%. Maybe if she has it in there. I'm um, in an 85 here. Possibly 100% with some MOLA investment. Um, they haven't talked about any MOLA investment changes. But if it's anything like. Um, if they do anything like that. Then maybe you could get those chances higher too. And then of course they want to change Leo as well. Um, the Leo changes I really didn't think were like. You know too impressive. But um, he's getting a. Uh, from 30% chance to a 50% chance to use Sparrow Dive. Um, and he's getting the uh, cooldown reduction and the 75% chance to stun. So that's actually not bad. Um, but I don't know. I, I was thinking more than that for some reason for Leo. But the, he is having, you know, you are having ML Leo coming soon if you see my other videos. So that's something to look forward to as well. I said the probability of triggering Sparrow Dive has been increased. After using the skill Fox Hunt, adjusting the skill Flying Raku had the probability to inflict this combined with the lower cooldown reduction. She'll allow Leo to make more threatening attacks. So, I mean, overall, he is getting better, but I don't think it's going to be anything that's like actually meta change or anything like that as far as the changes. Um, Roman changes sound okay, uh, pretty cool. Um, so, it says before it used to be attacks all enemies with a magic circle with a 50% chance. To decrease combat readiness by 20% twice. Um, now he attacks them with a 20%. I mean, with a 50% chance to increase, to decrease combat readiness by 20% four times. So four times now. Um, that's actually kind of crazy. And um, now he basically it says, uh, and the caster's combat readiness increases by an additional 30% when the enemy is buffed. Um, so before damage and dealt increase and the enemy is inflicted with two poison effects for two turns when the enemy is buffed. Um, so not only is he going to get those poison effects, but he's also going to increase uh, his combat readiness by 30% now, which is pretty cool. Um, so he's going to have more chances to uh, go the more buffs that a team has. Um, 
but he's gonna be dispelling them as well so just keep that in mind and uh they're actually changing rigorous so like i said they changed it uh they changed it from before it actually had a little bit more but it was actually a a, a mistake that they had in there but they changed that um so now he has an additional effect the effect is increased by 25 percent um attacks and spears with a 50 percent chance to decrease um so i guess that's a weird way to uh, write it write it to increase yeah for two turns in fact, why didn't it just say 75 percent there um very weird way to put it but yeah that um and let's see attacks with a spear with a 50 percent chance to decrease defense for two turns the effect chance is increased by 20 percent 25 percent when a caster is given increased speed so when he has uh, increased speed he will have an extra 75 percent oh well not extra but 75 percent chance to decrease defense for two turns so um oh okay it's rickers and captain rickers that's what was messing me up okay um so basically this regular rickers obviously if you're using rickers you want to get captain rickers um because you're going to be getting that extra 25 percent when given increased speed so that's nice and let's see Oh yeah, his runes changed too. That's right. So he's getting an increase in his runes. Um, healing increased by 100% and damage increased by 41% um, for the Supreme Spear and for Skill Tree right here. Defense increased by 15% and uh, health increases by 20%. So 10% increase there and a 5% increase in defense there as we can see. So not bad. Not bad. Um... Let's see. Oh, they're actually changing Ross too. Yeah, that's actually one thing. Um, so, Ross before used to strongly attack all enemies with a sword storm, recovering health proportional to damage dealt, and, uh, and increasing defense of the caster for two turns. Um, now they said uh, strongly attacks all enemies with a sword storm, recovering health, um, and increasing defense for two turns. So it's just recovering health. It's not proportional to the damage that he's dealing, so he don't have to worry about that. He is a knight, so you don't have to worry about that. So he probably is recovering even more health than before. It's just like probably like a, a static amount. Um, and the basic version of the skill will now have the same effect as the awakened version now too. So that's cool. Um, before and after for awakening skill has a change. Sword of Hair strongly attacks all enemies, recovering health, proportional to damage dealt, and increased defense. You had to change that after um slash attacks with the sword with a 75 percent chance to dispel a buff damage dealt increase proportional to the caster's max health so he is going to have dispelled the x slash um this is the awakening version after the change so they're definitely changing ross they want ross to be more used they felt like he's the protagonist of the game why is he being used a lot of people just didn't feel he was good i mean obviously you know i don't ever think ross would probably be like too good he is the first hero you get the first three star they just want him to be a little bit more used than what people are using before maybe this will change that we'll have to see um but they said basic versions of skills have been changed so it has the same effect so that's cool now this is important right here these adjustments are mainly for the heroes which are used for pve content and will be updated on august 8th two weeks from now so we would have this update on august the 8th um they're very conscious about uh, adjusting PvP heroes, so they want to, you know, they want to take their time with that. So it's PvE heroes, you know, they like to say certain heroes for PvP. Um, the details shared about that would be July 31st. Now they give us a hint, as you can see down there, um, who these heroes are. So we're going to be getting more details on this on July 31st. I will be covering that, so stay tuned to that, along with future balances and plans and policies. So. They're um, also thinking about some more plans and policies to go along with, like, how they want to go about the balancing for these heroes. I guess they want to have, like, some concrete um, idea of, like, how they want to go about this for the future, which is a good plan, I think. Um, so people have, you know, an idea of what to expect, and we are happy with a fresh meta happening ever so often. Adjustments of the heroes, especially the nerfing of heroes, will be as long as possible to receive feedback from hairs but buffs will be updated as fast as possible okay that's interesting so they're they're hesitating to buff heroes now i mean to uh, debuff heroes and they want our feedback 
before they do it and then they will like implement it depending on I guess what the uh, community wants and uh, updating the buffed heroes uh, more quickly so basically hero adjustments for the following PvP will be released July 31st so of what they just said I'm guessing we will have these buffs faster than we will have these nerfs they're gonna tell us these nerfs we get to express our opinion to the devs and then they will implement as such taking our um, feedback wherever they see fit um, so buffs that we're seeing are Bissar, Euphine, Lilibeth, Lydica, and ML Kali um, and nerfs expected we all knew it was coming ML Armetha, ML Ball, ML Vildred he just got buffed getting nerfed already and ML Armin um, ML heroes that are expected to be nerfed will be adjusted to an optimal level to prevent heroes from being ineffective Okay, that makes sense. So basically they're saying, um, you know, they're going to nerf them, but they're not going to like butcher them. They just want them to uh, be at a, they want them to be competent, but not ineffective. So they're not going to, they're trying to give us our, uh, you know, some security there that they're not going to be, uh, you know, bad, like super bad. Compensation and exchange related information will be announced when the details are settled. Remember, if you do have a five star ml hero and they do get nerfed you do get the hero selector as far as we know the hero selector basically means once your character get nerfed you literally get to choose what next five star that you want um a lot of people um some people like it some people don't mainly people who don't have five stars like me um don't think it's a good idea meanwhile the people who have five stars like just begging their character to get nerfed and they're just gonna pick like the next op ml unit um so let me know what y'all think about that by the way uh like I said, I'm not a big fan of it. Even if I had a five-star uh, unit, I just think it's kind of crazy that they're doing it. Just the thought of that is, is actually crazy to me. Um, but it says, yeah, compensation will be made for that. However, there may be changes to these details when updated. If so, we'll make sure to let you know about the changes as soon as possible. When balancing heroes, there needs to be consideration from various aspects. Yes, um, these upcoming balance changes was planned beforehand, so we made the adjustments of Moonlight Heroes earlier. We will be glad to have your feedback on the adjustments and also for the future adjustments of Moonlight Heroes. So they're really trying to take this into consideration, guys. They, like, really want our feedback on this. I think they're trying to get more involved in the community after the incidents that they happened, uh, had with the, you know, the Korean drama that was happening. And just really want to have everybody on board on the stuff that they're doing and making sure everything is right for the community as a whole. So I think it's good that they're trying to get us more involved and the things that they are doing inside the game. Also, Lilibeth actually does have uh, a challenge character that may be showing us some type of implication of what we may be looking at. It looks like a complete overhaul and it actually has the extinction taken out. Um, but maybe, you know, maybe they thought it may not be good with that. Or maybe the challenge hero is just completely different and has nothing to do with it. But overall, I'm going to go over to that and show you all exactly what the challenge Lilibeth have. So we can see if this actually is a sneak peek of her or not. So it seems like this is what some people think the new Lilibeth will be about. Based on her challenge uh, kit. Which is actually like almost like a rework of her. So let's take a look and see what she got in this. So it says for Slice Slice. Strikes and slice the enemy with a 50% chance to stun now for one turn. When the enemy is debuffed, effect chance increases to 100. So if you have a team that's working with a bunch of debuffs. Her S1 is actually going to be pretty good in affecting stun, 100% uh, chance of that actually, uh, so it's kind of crazy. Um, rather than Slice Slice being before, um, it had a 35% chance to do the unable to be buffed for two turns. So if it's anything like this, then that actually is a pretty good change. And then we go over to Snip Snip, which it says brutally cut, dispelling all, the, uh, yeah, dispelling all buffs. With a 100% chance to make the enemy unable to be buffed for two turns. So they actually changed it from the bleeding effect. And they moved basically her S1 over to this. And made it able to dispel buffs. So before it was a 35% chance uh, to inflict bleeding's effects for two turns. Dealing additional damage when their target isn't buffed. But now it's supposed to be a basically a dispeller. And supposed to be able to give you a 100% chance Un unable to be uh, debuffed so that's actually really good so you got 200% chances off the bat right here um, so that means if this is actually like you know how she's going to be 
then that's actually really insane and like a lot of her stuff may come down to like I don't know maybe a cooldown and just a bunch of extra damage if she's going to have this kid actually and the S3 here I was slash to the enemy with a uh, Cho and Mao inflicting two bleeding effects for three turns when the caster has three or fewer debuffs after the attack the target remaining health decreases by 50 percent um so basically this means that she will no longer have the extinction if they do this but overall this kit sounds a little bit better now it isn't as you know that good situational thing that was before but it's something that seems like it has a lot better use and a lot better utility so maybe people will be more happy with this than having the extinction but yeah that's all i got for this one how do you guys like the changes for the heroes that we're about to get um specifically the ones that we have listed so far also what do you think about what the nerfs are going to be for these ml heroes and the characters that are about to get buffed what do you think the buffs are going to be as well anyway if you like anything i had to say drop me a like and i greatly appreciate it and you want to see more from me follow me on my socials also don't get forget to subscribe and turn on the notifications to let me know when the next video goes live as always my name is daikin and i'll see y'all next time signing out